Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 6 of Xcode Tips. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering a bunch of the different features in Xcode 3's edit menu. So um, this tutorial just shows you some nifty tricks that uh, can certainly speed up some processes that you have may, uh, may have run into or wanted to do but didn't know how or just took forever to do them. So uh, the edit menu can be pretty useful in that sense. So before I get started here though, um, I just want to explain this code. It's pretty basic if you've been uh, watching the Objective-C tutorials or know anything about Objective-C. Basically we just create a string, uh, a mutable string, and we initialize it with a value of John. Then we're printing it out. And then we're basically appending to the string, which means you tack on this value to the end of it. So now we have a string with John plus a space and Bob. So now we have a string, our, our name string is basically John Bob. Then we print out that. So uh, that's basically all a program does. And we're just going to build and run here, see what it does. And as you can see, John and John Bob is the output. So pretty simple if you know any Objective C. And if you don't, uh, you can surely check out the Objective C tutorials that are on the channel. So anyway, let's get into the edit menu and what it has to offer. So the edit menu uh, is up here and has a bunch of different features in it, but you can also right click anywhere in the editor and you'll basically get most of the features that are available in the edit menu as well. So that's just a side note. Uh, I tend to use the right clicking option uh, more than the edit menu, but um, you can explore what options are in the right click as well. So let's go ahead up to the edit menu here and let's just cover the basic ones that we know. We know undo and redo. That's just, uh, you know, your basic undo and redo. I don't really know how to explain that. Um, so that's just normal text stuff. Uh, cut, copy, and paste is all simple text stuff as well that we've seen in probably every single application. And the main ones that we're interested in are uh, basically from here to here. Uh, so, and spelling and special characters are just uh, spell check. We'll, we, I might uh, touch on that at the end there, but um, the main ones are between here and here. So, our, as you can see, this first feature here called Refactor is um, grayed out, and interestingly enough, uh, we can use it. Um, you might think that you can't use it, but uh, you actually can. So, let's just go ahead and click on our name uh, variable here and as we can see um, it just kind of makes a little underline under every instance of that uh, variable but now let's go up to our edit menu and let's hit refactor and as you can see it's available now so we can hit refactor and as you can see there are a bunch of different features that refactor actually has to offer um, some of the common ones would be modernized loop which actually can sometimes be tough uh, to figure out even how to do that at least in my opinion uh, so if uh, you know how to uh, create or modernizing loops just simply means um, using for each loops so um, that's basically all that means um, and then uh, the rename uh, is probably one of the most common things as well so we're just going to cover uh, rename in this tutorial so what does rename do well basically uh, we selected our name variable over here and we want to change that to let's say my name so now uh, let's go and go ahead and preview that and as we can see we got two, uh, this file here and it says we have two changes that we can make so uh, technically it's four changes but um, are grouped together here. So anyway, we can see that uh, it will change all of these instance variables into this instance variable name that we wanted to specify. So we can go ahead and make sure all the changes that we wanted here are what we want, and um, we can go ahead and hit apply. And as you can see in our code, every instance of name now changes to my name, and therefore our code can still run fine. So that's uh, the refactor menu, or the uh, refactor option, and you can uh, check around with uh, different things that it does, but those are some of the main things. So another feature would be um, the convert to Objective-C option, Objective-C 2.0, uh, that's important. Um, uh, converting to Objective-C 2.0 just means that you're converting to some of the main features that it added, which was loops, or modernized loops, as they put it, and also properties. So those were some of the main features. So um, what uh, we can analyze this in is our rectangle class that we've worked with in the Objective-C tutorials. If you don't know what this is, uh, it's a, just essentially a class 
with uh, two different instance variables, and these are just different setters and getters to change and get the values that we have to our instance variables. So um, what can we do with this? Well, we can go up to our edit menu and we can just hit convert to objective C and this will analyze every single file that's in your project so I don't actually have to switch to this file but um, it's just to show you that um, what we had so we can uh, we can modernize loops and we can also use properties so if we want to click that we can hit preview and we'll basically analyze all the files that we have and see what it can convert for us so once it's done, as you can see, it says now we have one change that we can make. And it basically shows that we can create properties for our height and width instance variables. And uh, that's shown here, uh, right, just uh, in the changes here. So we can see we went from no properties to having properties. So um, that, that basically just shows you that you can... Um, it will automatically convert uh, some of the features that are available in Objective-C 2.0. So pretty simple stuff, uh, nothing too extravagant, but uh, if you're already using properties and you're already using um, for each loops and different things like that, then uh, these aren't that important. So definitely if you, are, if you have old code that uh, doesn't have properties or doesn't uh, use modernized loops, then you can basically uh, just uh, check your code that you have here and see if you can convert, it, convert any of it. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that because uh, we don't really need to do that, but you get the idea. So now let's check some of the other options here. Format, font and text, basically these two are just your basic uh, things that you'd see in a text editor again, which we don't really care about. The ones we care about uh, mostly are these here. Uh, Re-indent, I'm going to show you in a second, and then uh, shift right and shift left, these ones I use most often. So I'll show you how these work. So sometimes I get code that uh, is sent to me by somebody and it's all out of whack uh, for whatever reason. It has, uh, when I go to copy and paste it, it has horrible formatting errors. And so um, when I want to fix this, all I have to do is go to the edit menu and I can hit format and re-indent. And that will re-indent everything to its proper position um, for our code. So that's an extremely useful feature as well if you um, are looking to organize all the code that you have. So uh, that's one great feature. Um, another one is just shifting right and shifting left. So basically if you use command and right bracket key, with right square bracket key, then uh, you can shift things to the right, and if you use the left uh, bracket key, then you can just shift stuff to the left. So that's pretty much that, uh, and again, those are options right there. Um, another thing, or the next menu uh, item here would be find, and uh, I think find is probably the most uh, common out of this menu here. Jump to selection and jump to nef definition are also useful. Uh, they can basically uh, jump you to different header files, um, but uh, that's a little technical, so I'm just going to leave those out. The main one out of this menu would be the find option, and you can also access this by doing command F. So um, we're just going to go ahead and hit that, and basically find basically does what it um, you would expect it to. It works like any other find uh, thing in any other application, like it does in Safari or it does in a word processor. It just finds any value that you type in. So if you want to find where my name is located, then there you go. You can find every instance of my name. Um, and you can find any instance that has str. Um, so the, the only thing with this is that uh, it also is find and replace, but um, this I would not advise to use if you're trying to replace an, like an instance variable name. Even if you just have my name, um, it can uh, cause errors if, uh, let's say for example, my name was located in a comment or something, or anywhere in uh, that you don't want it to be. Uh, find and replace will find every single instance of the my name string anywhere in your code. So it doesn't matter what it actually belongs to, it will just re uh, replace it with any value we type in. So for this example, we can see that it'll, it'll work, and we can just hit replace all, and it works fine. Um, so find and replace is, um, it can be useful if you want to find or replace anything. Find can also just be used if you want to search up any instance of different things. So uh, if we want to find Bob, we can just see that it's right there in our code. 
So that's basically uh, the find option, which you can also use by Command F. Another feature uh, that we have in our edit menu, uh, we're going to skip the sort. I don't really know uh, how it's useful, but um, it might be useful for sorting something over here. I've never actually used it, so that's why I'm not really uh, giving you any information on it. But um, So I wouldn't uh, assume that it's that useful. Um, adding to bookmarks, basically you can select or put your cursor anywhere in text. Uh, let's say I just want to bookmark this right here. Uh, I could just go up to that say add to bookmark, you can also use command D. It'll add a bookmark, you can change the name if you want, and in the bookmark section over here we can see that we have a bookmark uh, that we just saved, and you can see if we double click that, uh, that shows up in code. So that's basically uh, that, and that's uh, all that bookmarks really do. It's basically like a bookmark in Safari that you'd use, just uh, basically tags the spot that you uh, want to look at. So that's basically what a bookmark is, um, another feature in the edit menu would be the go to line, which basically if you want to find any line, you're talking to your friend and say, hey, yo, can you check out this line of code that's on line 10? And he would say, yeah, sure. So he could use the go to option and just enter the line that uh, you were talking about. And there you go. You just sent your buddy to line 10. So that's the go to option. And uh, that's pretty simple, I guess. Um, some more features are the completion options, and uh, we'll cover uh, a few of these here. So basically, uh, completion options are just different ways you can auto-complete code. So let's say we have uh, we start typing and we have this auto-completion that uh, starts showing up. We can use uh, the escape button or escape key, which will bring up any uh, other uh, possible options that it would suggest to you. So that, and then we could just select any of these options. There's also the control and then period. Control period will alternate between any options that are available. So we have what we normally, we just typed, then there are all the different options that uh, we can get. So that, again, that's control period. There's also, um, I'm just going to select something here, uh, pen string, yes. Let me just finish this up here. So let's say, for example, we also have something like this if statement, and we want to toggle between uh, the placeholders. We can also hit control slash, and that will toggle between the placeholders, which are like the blue things in our code. So that's uh, command, or that's right, control and slash. So uh, again, those were located in the edit. That was next completion, uh, completion list, and select next placeholder. Another feature which is really useful is the edit in scope option. So if we want to click this and uh, let's say we want to uh, change all the instances of name. So this is very similar to our refactor option that we had before uh, which is some slight differences. But anyway, if we hit edit all in scope, uh, as you can see it will kind of highlight all the instances of this name variable. And now I can just change it. and it, as you can see, it changes every single instance of it throughout the class, or uh, our scope, I should say. So basically, that's just um, how that works, and um, you can just change any variable that uh, has the same name or is in the scope of your um, project. So that's that. Um, the next thing would be um, to go back to the end menu, and the, um, a very interesting feature is actually the insert text macro option which uh, you can see gives you a bunch of different language things that uh, you'd like to enter. So let's say you're working with HTML and uh, you want to enter the bold, uh, I don't know what they call those, markups in uh, HTML, and um, you could ins insert your uh, bold markup there. Um, but there are tons of other features in the macros as well. It has all the C macros that you might want to use, well, maybe not all of them, but a bunch of them. Um, Objective C has all the different ones you may want to use. So let's say uh, you want to create an init, or let's do an NS call, uh, log call. So let's say we want to create an NS log uh, very quickly. We could just click click that, and as you can see uh, over over here, created it because my pointer was set, selected over there. It just automatically creates this NS log for us uh, with the string and all. So um, that's a very interesting feature. You might say that that's uh, not that useful considering it takes so long to get to the edit menu. However, you could uh, add a keyboard shortcut in preferences and you could select NS log and you can make a keyboard shortcut, shortcut for it 
uh, to quickly uh, create NS logs if you wanted to. So that's uh, that. And also, uh, just to view some other ones here, there's also, if we wanted to create uh, maybe like a switch block, we could do uh, something like that and we would uh, quickly create the switch statement. So that's uh, that, and uh, that's pretty much uh, all that uh, that option does. Insert, inserting text macros, uh, you can also you can just generally search some different ones that are available, and uh, they can be quite useful. So um, certainly a good thing to check out. And again, you could also apply a keyboard shortcut to any of these, and you could uh, quickly hit something on your keyboard and maybe create an NS log if you wanted to. And the last option is uh, simply spell check, and that's pretty basic. It just uh, checks all your spelling that you have in your code. However, this isn't exactly that useful considering code is uh, not always grammatically correct. So um, basically, it might underline some things that it doesn't like, and um, so it's good for if you're looking through comments, but uh, other than that, it's not that useful. So I generally just have it off. So anyway, that's um, pretty much uh, all the different features that are in the edit menu. And um, so it's uh, quite interesting in my opinion. Uh, there are just so many different things that people don't know about and can really uh, speed up just some processes that can be pretty tedious. Um, so anyway, that was the edit menu. Again, you can right click anywhere in this code and uh, get most of these options as well. So um, if you want to do that, that's always an option. and. Anyway, um, if you have any questions on any of these features, uh, feel free to just leave your questions in the comments or send me a message. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, please check out any of the other tutorials on the channel as well, and uh, stay tuned for more Xcode tips.